Hey everyone. Hi. Thanks for checking out this uh, conference overview. We're going to go through Microsoft's E3 conference. A lot of stuff to talk about, so let's just dive right into it. Microsoft focused on their usual thing, which is just games. Uh, it, they really needed to do that this year because previously they haven't had many exclusives. Right. They had 50 games at their conference, roughly. Uh, 18 exclusive and 15 world premieres. And they're really stressing that they're going to look and play the best on Xbox One. Yeah, so I don't know if that means the Xbox One X or all Xbox Ones. I didn't really see them say much to show that anything would look better on the Xbox than the PS4. Right. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it, mm -hmm. One thing, just some overall conference impressions. It was really funny to see everyone up front in the same shirt. It looked really weird, like a... Yeah, it didn't look natural at all. Uh, Especially when you had like the one or two people, like the one person in, like a Hawaiian shirt and like one person in a green shirt, they just stuck out so much. Yeah, it was funny <laughs> to see. The people at the back were just regular, uh, you know, dressed regularly. So I don't know who those people at the front were. I imagine Microsoft maybe gave free shirts to the first hundred people who came in or whatever, the first people sitting in those seats or maybe they planned mm -hmm. to come that way. Who knows? Um, but yeah, real <laughs> funny to see. Uh, let's get all the platform news out of the way first because there's a whole bunch of that. With the focus on, uh, you know, more exclusive games coming to the Xbox. Like I said, something they really need to drive home because the last two years of exclusives have been pretty bad. Yeah, they've announced a couple studios. Uh, the first one was The Initiative. So it's, a, like you said, a new Microsoft studio. Um, I saw it's led by the former Crystal Dynamics head of, of studio, Daryl Gallinger. Mm -hmm. So Gallagher. yeah, I don't know when he was Crystal Dynamics head, but... Crystal Dynamics have always put out good games, so hopefully he comes up with something good for them. They didn't announce any games or anything they're working on. Mm -hmm. But then they had, um, they said Undead Labs is joining Microsoft Studios. And, you know, those are the guys who just launched State of Decay 2, I believe. But, right. I mean, that's that's great. Great to have that studio locked down, but they're already making Xbox exclusives. So I don't think that really adds much to... Uh, you know, that's true. Yeah, anything. that's a good point. And it's the exact same thing for Playground Games, who they talked about, you know, the, the Forza team, which, of course, everything they've done has been uh, Xbox exclusive. So great. <laughs> so, yeah, that doesn't really impact any other. Like, it doesn't really impact PlayStation when that's an excuse when that company already does exclusives. Mm hmm. But then they announced Ninja Theory, and that's a pretty big deal because Ninja right, Theory yeah. like, kind of started off or kind of made their name by putting out exclusive PlayStation titles, right? Or at least the first one, what was Heavenly Sword, the first big mm -hmm. game from them was an exclusive. And I guess Enslaved wasn't, and so in a Sacrifice wasn't. But yeah, so they're a good team. I think that's probably, they're probably not too expensive a team and they make great content. So that's probably a really smart move for Microsoft to get them. Yeah, definitely. And then the last one that they acquired was Compulsion Games. And then finally they picked up uh, Compulsion Games. So that those are the guys making We Happy Few. And yeah, that game looks really great. So I look forward to see what they're coming out with next. Uh, other than that, they pushed their Game Pass a lot. That's something they announced a little while ago that, you know, you can already get into. That's basically a subscription service for Xbox games. It's not cloud streaming. It's, it's literally you're downloading all the games you want to play. And as long as you have the subscription, you can play them. So they announced that today um, Elder Scrolls Online Tamriel is coming out, Fallout 4, The Division, and all of those games are enhanced for the Xbox X. Uh, and then they announced that they're putting out a bunch of uh, indie games over the next little while and that when uh, some of the games we talk about below come out, they'll be available day one on through the Game Pass. Um, they also mentioned that they've been working on this fast AI game so it gets games to start up faster only on select titles. I don't know how big of a deal that is, uh, but uh, I guess that is big enough for them to mention. And then they just mentioned that they're still working on cloud streaming. It seems like everyone is. I think that's going to be the big thing in the next generation or maybe the generation after that where you can stream your console games to uh, any device. So we'll see how they do there. And lastly, they did announce that they're working on the next Xbox consoles, but no details at all. Mm -hmm. So I've just broken, a tease. Yeah. So I've broken this list up into exclusive games, which we'll go through, and non-exclusive games. Let's start with all the exclusive ones. First off, we got a trailer for Halo Infinite, which I'm not sure if that's Halo 6 or not. Um, it does have Master <laughs> Chief. It, it, that's it. They just showed a little cutscene, so I have no idea. Yeah. I, I'm guessing <laughs> it's Halo 6. On. Yeah. <laughs> then they followed up with a really cool looking uh, sequel to Ori and the Blind Forest, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Oh, also, yeah. I'm really excited for this one. Yeah. It's also exclusive to the Xbox. 
Um, the first game was an exclusive, but I think the definitive edition of the original game was a physical exclusive on the Xbox X, uh, Xbox One. So, yeah, that's coming out in 2019. It looked really cool. It looks like mm-hmm. the bird from the end of the original game is now kind of a companion. And it just that game is great and worth checking out. Next, they showed the long-awaited Crackdown 3. Uh, they had a trailer that really featured Terry Crews from, you know, a bunch of stuff now. But mostly, I think, Brooklyn Nine-Nine he's best known for. The game looks extra crazy like crackdown was the first open world games that made things pretty crazy but this looks like it's taking it to a whole new level there's Mm -hmm. there's vehicles that can drive on walls and tanks and there are crazy weapons almost like ratchet and clank style weapons there's (laughs) mech enemies and it it, yeah all the purple in it really gave me a saints row feel Uh, i know it's not but it (laughs) yeah i I don't know it looks fun Uh, with the kind of misstep that was crackdown too i really look forward to checking that out uh, yeah, and right after that, they showed the Thea of Thieves expansions coming up. First Forsaken Shores launching in July and then Curse Sales in August. Uh, I, they didn't show too much about it. The trailer was just kind of like a story trailer that showed that there's a new land, the Forsaken Shores, that, you know, more crazy skeleton crews are coming out of. And there's, you know, an ancient evil in there and it's a dark and lovely place. And I don't know, it's, it's cool. Sea of Thieves really needs more content. They didn't really, I don't know if this... Forsaken Shores is actually like a new explorable place or if it's just a narrative device. I kind of, I, right, I don't like, a bit vague. yeah, and I don't like how these games, some games like this tend to like, when the base game is already missing so much content to add new land, like I'd rather them focus on adding new content to the land that exists before just cordoning off a new area full of new stuff. Cause that's just my preference. And who knows, maybe this will be really cool. I'm sure it's great for Sea of Thieves fans, but it seems like more content than anyone was expecting so soon, so that's great anyway. Next is Forza Horizon 4, which is set in historic Britain. The game has more varied and different environments. It looked pretty cool, a little more varied than the previous games have been. There's cities and rural areas and just a bunch of cool places you can drive through. The big thing here is it's now a shared open world and there's world events that are synced so that all players can experience it together. There mm-hmm. are uh, different seasons, so things change up quite a bit with each season. They were showing at one point, like when it's winter time, a lake freezes over and that changes up how you can drive through the environment. So that seems pretty cool. This is coming out on October 2nd and is included with the Game Pass. Right. Yeah, it looks really dynamic and really... Um, um, I also saw they had a new chat feature as well that looked really um, easy to use while playing. They just showed a, a quick clip of it. Yeah, the Horizon games, or the Forza games in general, are always good showpieces for the Xbox, so I'm sure that one will be no different. So next up, they showed PUBG. They didn't show too much about it because it's technically already out, but they did announce that there's a new war mode coming with new environments. So I don't know what that entails. Probably more of a deathmatch kind of thing instead of just the uh, the standard Royale mode they have. And it's coming mm-hmm. out in winter 2018. Next up, they had the trailer for Session, another skateboarding game. They didn't have any gameplay footage. It was just the the quick trailer. Yeah, so this is smart that this is an exclusive because, you know, people have been begging for Skate 4 for a long time, and that's never come. People have wanted a good classic Tony Hawk game for a while, and the ones we got were not good. So Mm -hmm. I think it's time for this genre to come back, and hopefully they can do it. Following that, they showed us a trailer for some Cuphead uh, expansion. It's called Cuphead in the Delicious Last Course. And the big thing for that is that there's a new playable character, Chalice. And that's coming out 2019 as well. Yeah, so great for Cuphead fans. I look forward to checking that out. Mm -hmm. After that, there was a trailer for a new game I hadn't heard of before called Tunic. It's an isometric puzzle action game made by a single developer in Halifax. Um, And it looks a bit like um, a Zelda game, but featuring a little fox. So it looks very cute. I'm curious to see what that game is like. And then that was followed up by a trailer for Battletoads, which I didn't expect at all. Um, Also coming out in 2019, um, the big thing for this one I noticed was that there's a three-player co-op mode. Yeah, so that'll be fun. They didn't show really Mm -hmm. anything. There's just kind of a kind of teaser trailer. So hopefully that holds up. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the gear stuff. Really one, uh, let's just get the big one out of the way first. They kind of teased us with a couple other small games first, but eventually, yes, Gears 5. The characters from Gears 4 return, including Marcus. Uh, and it just, yeah, looked like a good classic Gears game. There's uh, mm-hmm. only thing I noticed different other than, you know, the environments was that there's new weapons. I didn't recognize the gun that they were using in that trailer. And there was an enemy with his big spiky bat and then it showed you using it. So that looks like a cool new melee weapon. 
So then into the other uh, Gears games, there's a game called Gears Pop that looks really cute. It's the art style based on Funko Pop characters, and uh, there's no really gameplay. We don't know what it is, but it is basically coming out for iOS and Android, so just a mobile game. Mm -hmm. And then finally, they briefly showed Gears Tactics, which I think they said was PC only. It's an isometric tactics game that takes place 12 years before Gears 1. It looks like a good tactics game, to be honest. But I'm hoping that comes out for the Xbox. I just I think they announced it as a PC game. Yeah, I would imagine it would come out on Xbox eventually. Before we move into the multi-platform stuff, uh, they didn't. They did have kind of a sizzle reel with just a whole bunch of indie games. Some of them are exclusive. They all look pretty interesting. Definitely one that jumped out at me was this uh, new Super Meat Boy. It looks really cool. So uh, a bunch of these games I'm just mm-hmm. going to put up now so you can check them out. Uh, and hopefully we'll hear more about these games sometime soon. Yeah. So then let's get into the multi-platform stuff. Um, I'm always surprised when, you know, these big press conferences do this. I guess it's just to have, you know, more things that people can talk about. But, like, these aren't Xbox exclusives, so the press that they get here is might as well just be press for PlayStation as well, right? Right, um, yeah, that's true. You know, I mean, they spent, like, five minutes on Fallout 76, and Bethesda's press conference is a couple hours afterwards, so I don't know... <laughs> I don't, I don't get the marketing reason behind it. I'm sure there's a great rationale that I just don't understand because I'm not in that world. But let's just quickly go through some of these. You should check out these trailers if these games interest you. But yeah, there is a game called Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This was the world premiere of it. It was by From Software, so the uh, Dark Souls guys. It looked really cool. It was kind of like a, a what would you say, like an ancient Japan? It was like a samurai theme? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um I don't know how soulsy it was. It did look like that, like a faster paced version of that, but who knows? And it's got this cool grappling hook weapon that you could use in a variety of different ways that looked pretty cool. Then they showed Fallout 76. They pretty much said what everyone knew. It's a prequel to the other game. You're the first vault to open up and go into the world and try and repopulate it. And it's four times the size of Fallout 4. That's the bit of new thing we got. And it's set in the hills of West Virginia, but they didn't confirm if it was a survival game. They kind of talked about it like it was a real fallout game so let's see in their press conference in a couple hours what they have to say about that following that was tales of Vesperia definitive edition that's coming out this winter and it's basically a remastered version of the uh Vesperia game which i think was the 360 exclusive game right yeah but i i think there's some extra content in the definitive edition that hasn't been released here before so for fans of that series it's definitely a nice piece to get nice Following that was a trailer for um, a new game in the Life is Strange universe, although they specifically said it's an original story uh, called The Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit uh, about um, a young boy. They tell you that his mother is gone, so they don't say whether she's left or whether she passed away, but he has a single dad now, and he's dealing with the kind of things that kids deal with, you know, bullies, self-confidence, but he's really imaginative, so it looks like he's channeling and dealing with those issues through this Captain Spirit persona he has. It looked really cute. It does look, yeah, interesting. And those guys tell great stories, so hopefully it'll mm-hmm, be good. Yeah. Uh, and I'm curious to see if there'll be any ways that it does tie into the Life is Strange stories. Mm-hmm, yeah, that'd be neat. Yeah. Uh, after that, they just showed something that was announced before the press conference. Basically, Nier Automata is coming to the Xbox as a Become as Gods edition that includes some previous costume stuff and, uh, and the scenario DLC will be available. I don't know if it's going to be bundled in or not or just a code, but I guess we'll see. Um, and mm-hmm. then they showed a trailer for Metro Exodus, which looked pretty good, but there was nothing really to gain from it other than, you know, new Metro game. There's some weapon customization in it that looks neat, and that's it. Then they showed us the Kingdom Hearts 3 trailer, which I know everyone has been waiting and waiting for. Um, it gave us a look at some of the Frozen characters in the Frozen world, which included some skating and sledding, which looks pretty fun. They also, um, you know, gave us a quick glimpse of the Monsters, Inc., Tangled, and Wreck-It Ralph levels. Um, You also saw that the Gummy Ship segments is back, and the release date for that is January 29th, 2019. Then they had a quick demo of uh, Tom Clancy's The Division 2. This time the game takes place in Washington, and it looks like a more realized open world. It looks uh, pretty interesting. And then they showed the uh, Shadows of the Tomb Raider trailer coming out Mm -hmm. September 14th this year. And, you know, more Tomb Raider. Looked good. (laughs) Then they they showed, uh, what is this thing? Then they showed this game that had me hyped at the beginning, Black Desert. And this oh, looked, yeah. the trailer looked cool. It was a cool narrative trailer with like, you know, some really interesting narrative elements. But 
Um, then it turned out to be an MMO. So I don't expect any of that narrative stuff to come through in the final game. It may be a cool MMO. I don't think that's a good way to show it off. You know, a CG mm-hmm. trailer that builds up a really interesting story surrounding one character. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how that is. The right. action did look really good. Like the combat looked really fluid for an MMO. And mm-hmm. speaking of fluid combat, <laughs> they announced a new Devil May Cry. I thought this was maybe DMC2 uh, because of the style. It showed like a really a character that really looked like it was inspired by the remake and not from the original games. I'm guessing that's Nero. It may be a new character. They didn't really say. It definitely wasn't Dante or uh, Virgil, but I guess it could actually right. be Dante or Virgil uh, from like way before Devil May Cry 3 even, right? Oh, that's true. A younger yeah. version, actually, now that I think about it. But yeah, I mean, it looks good. Um, it looks very different. The creator did say the gameplay does hold up to the classics. So, you know, that's what the original games were known for. So let's hope that that stays true. Yeah, because the, the trailer they did show, like, it looked really exciting. Like, the, the action looked really good. So I'm very curious to see. Up next, they showed a trailer for Jump Force, which looks like it's... um. A brawl game with One Piece, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, and Death Note characters, but set in like a modern world environment. So you have like an urban city um, and these like classic anime characters. I'm really excited to see this one. Yeah, this one looks like it has a way higher production value than like Jump Stars versus, right? Like this looked. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, it was just probably a CG trailer, not in game. So who knows what it will actually look like. But if it looks anything like that, um, it should be cool. So I'm mm-hmm. definitely can keep my eye on that. Next, they showed off Dying Light 2. So just to follow up to that original game, the fluid parkour is back. It's like, uh, you know, it looks like there's a lot more focus on your decisions changing the world and the storyline. So that's Mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Then they showed off Just Cause 4, which, you know, looks like a good follow-up to Just Cause 3. I don't think Just Cause 3 was quite the game 2 was. So let's hope that 4 is kind of like the next great Just Cause game. It looks good. Uh, I'm looking forward to check it out. And then finally, what I think a lot of people were waiting for, except all we got was a CG trailer, uh, <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077, yeah. uh, the you know futuristic sci-fi RPG by the creators of The Witcher. Looks really cool, but again, just a CG mm-hmm. trailer. We'll have to see how gameplay holds up, but I think everyone's really excited for that one. Yeah, definitely. And that's it for the Microsoft press conference. Um, yeah, overall, a good showing. Yeah, they definitely showed a lot of things, like to the point where you can't even remember everything they showed. So it's a, it's nice to have all that content there. So thanks for checking out this recap and our impressions of it. Uh, we're going to try and do all the press conferences as quickly as we can. So stay tuned for those. See you guys later. Bye.